if you take a class or if you want to wait for someone, that's fine. But this video is for those of you who uh, don't want to make the excuses and you want to just do it yourself. Um, so that being said, one of my tips is don't make those excuses. Don't sit around and wait for a class. Don't sit around and wait for, oh, I don't know anyone that speaks the language, then get online. If you have a computer or a phone or internet access or an iPad or Kindle or any of those things you can get online with, um, you have the resource. If you have a library, you have the resources to learn a language. Stop making excuses and do it. Um, so that's, I think maybe that, that maybe that'll be my first tip. First tip, stop making excuses. Um, hey guys, welcome to Matze Monday where I talk to you about things that you're interested in because you've asked me questions or things that I'm interested in and you're subscribed to my channel so I assume that you're interested in them too. Um, today I'm going to talk about language learning and some of the tricks and strategies that I've learned over the last few years. So I don't really know that I'm a great person to ask about learning languages because I feel like I'm not super great at it. Like I know that I've done it, um, but I don't think that it's something that I'm like specially equipped to do. That's something that I am better than anyone else at. I've just learned some strategies that work for me and it's something that I care about and I've chosen to invest some time into it. Uh, so I started learning languages with Hindi. Well, I took, um, I, I did a video where I talk about each little language, each language where I talk about each language a little, I did a video where I talk about each language a little bit. Um, so I gave you my history of learning Spanish and um, Portuguese, and I go on to Hindi and all of that. But I didn't really take language learning seriously until I decided to learn Hindi on my own. And that's where I really learned how to learn a language. My goals are not fluency, my goals are not to be perfect. I just, I enjoy it. It's a hobby, it's something I do in my free time, something I do in the morning. Instead of checking Facebook, I'll play Duolingo, and at night, Instead of reading something else, I will read the Bible in a foreign language or whatever, those types of things. Like it's just something that is a part of my daily life. Um, so I'll go through some tips and I, I, they probably won't be in any order. I'll probably just talk about them a little bit and I might bounce back and forth. That's how my Mate Mondays are going to be. I'm scatterbrained. I do this while my children, my babies, uh, I'm a foster mom. So while our foster children are napping, um, so I'm not really writing it out. I'm not thinking through it. So I ha um, I'm going to go through some of the tips that I have. So I think one thing that's really important is to do something every single day. If you can practice a language every single day, you're going to get a lot farther than if you just do it once a week. Uh, every single day is important. It's kind of like watercolor where you have to do it every day or you lose the skills. Like coming back to it, even after a week or two, even after a day or two, you'll feel like you've forgotten so much. I think that's really, really important every single day. Also, the first few months are incredibly important. The first month, maybe the first 30 days before you decide to start learning a language, research how to learn a language. Come up with some strategies, come up with some tips, find uh, your favorite program, find some resources you want to try, go buy flashcards, go write out the flashcards, even start writing out flashcards before you start learning the language, before you start really taking it seriously. My strategy, actually, let me, I'll find a flashcard and show you one second. So uh, with flashcards, the way I do it is I went through Duolingo recently and just kind of filled in some blanks. I like to come up with sentences so I learn the sentence structure by practicing a sentence and I have words I can replace in the sentence. So, and my pronunciation with Spanish is, or with port, uh, it's, my pronunciation with French is really bad, so ignore it. I'm still learning it. I've only been practicing for a couple, for not very long, and I haven't been practicing that much, um, because I've been really busy and sick and all sorts of things. Um, so, elle ne peut, elle ne peut parler ne écrit, um, which means she cannot read nor write. So I have it right there. She cannot read nor write. And then I have underlined um, what makes it a negative sentence, so not. I have it underlined in the English and the French. So I can go back and get rid of those two things, and then it's a positive sentence. Like, she can read, she can read and write. And then I have, um, there is no salt. So I have, that's not a good example, but one, is, so instead of trying to read the flashcards, you can see what it looks like. There's the front. And the back is usually just words. So the front is sentences, the back is vocabulary. And I usually try to make them sentences that I like to run. And then the back would have run, dance, sing, play. And then I'd have a, a sentence that says, I cannot eat, or I cannot read or write. And then on the back, I would have more verbs. Um, so I have them so you can, you can exchange 
the verbs and practice different verbs and practice different words. Maybe it would be colors or phrases. So you want to practice things together. Um, that's how I do it. I don't know that that's how everyone does it. And that's, with this video, these are just tricks that I've done and the things that work for me. And I like this because I can do it. Um, I can read the note card before I hop on my bike. I used to do this on the way to work. I'd read the note cards before I got on my bike to go to work and I'd think about them over and over and over while I was on my bike ride on the way to work. Sorry, I'm getting my tea, my mate. Uh, and so that's one that you could do it before you get in, well, you do it when you get in the car, your car's warming up if it's cold outside, read it, and then when you're driving, think about it over and over. And so that's flashcards. I really do like flashcards, guys. Um, but I would write, so with Hindi, I wrote out um, two months worth of flashcards before I even started studying them. So I had one, and each day I had a number on it. So each day I went through that day's flashcard. And some days maybe I skipped, I don't remember how strict I was on each day, but I went through it every single day. And then after those two months, I started back over and went through them again. And so find these information, find the, find a vocab list online, find these things online before you study. Also, if you're taking a class or using a book, um, those are helpful too. I don't, I did it all for free and I found the resources and I made, I, I basically typed up my own textbook from a website. Um, and then I went back and wrote everything in and I added the, the Hindi alphabet, the script, the, the transliteration, the Devanagari. Um, I hand wrote that in below the, below the typed aspects of like, I think it was like 115 lessons, each about a page and a half or um, between a page and two pages. So I did all of this work on my own. So this is another thing is figure out how you learn best. If you hate flashcards, don't use them. Um, for me, flashcards tend to work all right because of, I'm always busy, I'm always doing something. So if I'm in line, I can look at my flashcards. If I'm in line, I can look at flashcards on my phone. Uh, those types of things. If I'm waiting in a doctor's office, I can look at my flashcards. Uh, flashcards tend to work because uh, it's practical for times when I can't use other resources. So one of the big things that, like, if you want to learn a language, how badly do you want it? If you want it really badly, you will make the time to do it. So you have to find those things that make you want to keep pushing forward. Why do you want to learn the language? I think when those things, I think when we moved to Tri-Cities, I wasn't around as many Indians, and I really stopped practicing Hindi. I haven't practiced it much for two years because a lot of my my motivations have gone away. Like I still practice it, just not as avidly. I think my passion for it is, is I, I still love it, but it's still not, it's not there as much. And so I'm doing other languages and that's my choice. But I'm not saying, oh, I don't have Indian friends. I'm not making, I, it's, I can't learn it here. I'm still making Indian friends. I'm still practicing with people. I am choosing for it to be less of a priority. And that's the exact same thing with you. If you if you are choosing for it to be a priority, it will be. If you're choosing for it not to be, it won't be. And that's okay. If you learn the best in a classroom and so you're waiting for a class, it's still an excuse. You're still choosing that, but it's okay. Like you don't have to have it be your priority all the time. That's okay. And don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid to use kids' resources. Don't be afraid to watch a uh, children's cartoon in the language. Don't be afraid to... Um, read children's books. Don't be afraid to sing children's songs in that language. Uh, don't, it, kid stuff works for a reason and that's how kids learn. That's how adults can choose to learn. For me, that works. Uh, when I taught Hindi to adults with disabilities, also when I teach it to kids and when I'm with my babies, all same, like, or with Portuguese with babies, um, or Spanish, but like use kid stuff. You can enjoy it. If you choose to, you can. It's your attitude. Um, you get to pick. So focus on all areas of learning. Um, focus on all areas of learning. If you uh, if you practice reading, you'll get better at reading. If you practice writing, you'll get better at writing. If you practice speaking and listening, you'll get better at those. Um, there are there's two different philosophies I think in the the f field of learning languages. One is speak from day one, and all you do is speak and listen, um, which I think is good. I it's harder realistically for me to do that based on my time and my lifestyle, which we'll get into that in a second. So I do I am better at speaking. I'm better at reading and writing in the languages than I am at speaking and listening. And that's just, that's that's what I practice and so that's what I'm better at. It's kind of sad because I'd love to be able to speak well, but realistically I get, I practice um, speaking and I practice reading and writing more just because I do. You'll get good at what you practice. So practice everything. If you can immerse, so lifestyles I mentioned earlier, um, incorporate it into your life. Uh, watch, find TV shows you like in the language, find music that you like in the language. If you are a Christian or have a religious background, or even if you don't, read in the read 
Read the Bible is a really easy resource in most languages. So read the Bible in the language. Read other books in the language. Take notes in the language. If you're thinking about something, if you're listening to a talk, write in the language you're studying instead of your native language. If you write to-do lists, write in the language you're studying. Write in your target language. If you have a phone or a computer, change it to that target language. My Facebook's in Portuguese. I sometimes put it in Hindi, but I, I, my Facebook's in Portuguese right now because other people can read it because they read Spanish. So it's less confusing to explain. Anyways, if you're walking down the street, instead of talking to yourself in English or thinking to yourself in your native language, think to yourself in your target language. As you're walking, describe, um, when, I, I, when I go for the walk with the kids, I describe the trees and the sounds and the colors in Portuguese. I sometimes do it in English, but why? Why? They're, they're, why? Um, why do things in your native language if you want to learn a language? That's one of those things, like, it's typical and it can be challenging, but force yourself to do it if you want to learn the language again. Um, so I think those are kind of my tips. Figure out how you learn. Use those techniques, of course. Uh, do things in your target language. Stop doing things in your native language. Just stop. I mean, and that sounds so like, just stop. It's not that straightforward, but start working towards that. Um, incorporate it into your life. Uh, stop making excuses. I think these are some of the, I don't want to sound harsh, but I think there's lots of times with art and even being a foster parent and languages and so many things where people are like, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. And I'm like, then do it. Then do it. Um, like helping people. Then do it. I I don't, if you wish you could do it, do it. Um, so yeah, I think those are my tips. I hope I didn't come off too harsh, but that's genuinely do it. If you want to learn it, do it. These are some of the tips that I, um, I just, I'm not perfect in any language. I'm not fluent. So I'm not saying like, I'm great. I feel like I'm kind of a weird person to ask this question, but I love languages and I, I, I've learned a lot. So I'm sharing what I've learned over the last few years. Um, I think that's it. Thanks guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this Mate Monday. Um, if you have questions or topics you need to talk about, write them down below. Uh, I would love to do more responses for you guys. So I will see you in the future. Thanks. Bye.